awesome. Thank you so much for having us today. It's been an awesome experience having all these wonderful rangatahi involved in the program. Uh, ko Victoria Tuku Ingua. I'm from United Nations Youth New Zealand, and I run the Aotearoa Youth Declaration Conference. So it's an awesome honour to be here um, facilitating the youth panel today. So basically we'll just get them to introduce themselves, we'll run through a few questions, um, and then we'll have some questions from the audience. So keep those till the end. Yeah, awesome. Introduce yourself, Charlotte. Kia ora. Um, so my name's Charlotte. I'm a Year 9 student at St Orans. Um, and yeah, I guess I'm just really keen on kind of getting involved in my community and just helping people out. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora, uh, kia ora everybody. Um, ko kānihi parlahare tōku inua. My name's Kānihi. Um, I'm a descendant from Tūhoi and Te Atiawa. Uh, my, I'm passionate about my Māori culture and uh, having an understanding that uh, our culture, uh, there are values there that youth can use, as well as adults can use, um, to, to better our future. Kia ora. Kawai, kawai, tēnā tata. How's everyone doing today? Yeah. Can I get a kia ora? Kia ora, kia ora. Uh, ko wā tēne moa ana kēmo toko ingoa, uh, te kaumarua, a uh, hitau te kaumarua ki te kura kaupapa Māori o ngā mokopuna. Uh, kia ora everyone, my name is wā tēne moa ana kēmo, I am a year 12 student at te kura kaupapa Māori o ngā mokopuna. Uh, my father's side I'm from Ngāti Pro Ngāpuhi, uh, my mother's side I'm from Ngāti Awa in Ngāti Kahungunu. I'm really passionate about um, voicing my own opinions, voicing my own thoughts uh, to make a betterment uh, for my people and for my culture. Tēnā tātou. Yeah, kia ora. Um, we'll start it off, we'll go straight into the deep end. What are sort of the biggest challenges or sort of adversity that young people rangatahi face in Aotearoa today, in our generation? Yeah. Um, so something that really affects me um, and really just kind of affects a lot of people in my class and in my school is mental illnesses. Um, and like it seems to me after talking to like my parents and talking to a lot of the kind of all the people that I know that it's something that seems to have sprung up so much more within my generation. Um, and yet there's still so much stigma around it. Um, so I think that it's incredibly important to kind of get rid of that stigma. Um, and that until we do that, we're never really gonna be able to face the problem and really solve it. Um, same with mental health as well um, the education systems that we've been, that's been a big topic this morning as, I've, as, as I was listening uh, and those uh, education having stress on youth um, having to study at this time uh, at the moment um, in, in study mode um, for our exams at the end of the year and it's the stress that, that those exams have on youth that can cause mental health uh, and sometimes not having the sense of belonging to anything and sense of identity, and that's where I believe um, it can be a, a, a an issue with our um, for, for our dev development of our youth in the future. Uh, so I also believe that sense of belonging is very important uh, to, to rangatahi of today. Um, just because by having that sense of belonging, I believe that people, young people, are more confident into sharing their voices, uh, sharing their thoughts about our everyday problems. Um, so for me personally, I come from a a very big school with all its 100 students from year one all the way up to year 13. Um, and all of our subjects are all done in Te Reo Māori, but um, in saying that our English isn't as strong as our Te Reo Māori, so when it comes to voicing our opinions in English, uh, some of our students may not be as confident as they are, but by having that sense of belonging, I guess it helps them in sharing their voices and sharing their opinions. So, yeah, I really agree on what has been said so far. Yeah, um, sort of segueing on from that, um, how do you voice your opinions? You're all under 18. How do you contribute to the development and growth of your community, to the rangatahi in your community? Um, what ways can you be an active citizen as a young person? Um, yeah, I would really... Um, I think that one of the most powerful things that I have as a young girl in New Zealand... Um, would be my social media, um, which is often kind of viewed as like a negative thing. Um, but for me, it's been a massive way of how I can express my opinions and really express my viewpoints. Um, and I think that it's, it's kind of incredible because so many people have access to it. Um, so you can, you can find out so much about other people and learn so much about other people. Um, and it's, 
it seems like a platform where it's not just one vo <laughs> voice that's being heard. Um, it's all different voices, which I think is really, really good. I uh, say so for me, my mother has a saying that uh, you don't know what you don't know. You should just give it a shot. So my mother uh, pretty much just throws me in whatever and then uh, just hope for the best, I guess. And um, But in saying that, uh, I've been lucky enough to be a part of um, the Wellington City Council's um, youth, or the youth, oh, what is it? Youth the Youth Council, I guess, for Wellington City. And uh, that's been a major, I guess, amplifier uh, for me to voice my own thoughts and opinions. So, yeah. Um, my, myself personally, uh, it's been my culture, has uh, allowed me to voice my opinions and what I believe in. Uh, we have, I've, I've participated in uh, speech competitions, uh, it's well known around New Zealand, it's Manu Kōrero for secondary school students. Uh, for, uh, topics, ten, 10 sets of topics are given given out and each, each youth, uh, whoever wants to participate in this contest are able to choose a top topic and talk about it and what they believe in um, with using the values of um, within Māori culture. Um, I've also been uh, fortunate enough to participate in a youth forum uh, that was held in Hawaii as well as in Japan and it's um, known as Partnership for Youth uh, Vision 2030 and that has also been another opportunity for myself to voice my opinion and what I believe in um, for, for, our, for the betterment of uh, the benefit, um, to benefit our youth. And that, that's, those are the avenues that I've been able um, to participate in. Awesome, awesome. And sort of going along with this theme, the main ways for people under 18 to directly engage with government and local government is submissions, essentially. Um, is the English written language um, by submissions the best way for young people to be engaging or is social media forums, what ways can young people engage and how can governance bodies engage better and recognise different forms of engagement with young people? Yeah, you can think about it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah, no, that is, um, it's really important because I know um, I'm part of Youth Council as well, the Hutt City one, um, and something that we wanted to do was instead of just writing out a submission, we wanted to put it in video format. Um, and I feel like if we could get this into um, kind of the way that our government works and that you can put it in video or you can put it in, you know, however you want, um, I think it would kind of help people that might not be good at writing or that might not be good at speaking to kind of, yeah, get involved with that. Um, we have a saying in Māori uh, meaning kanohi te kanohi, and, uh, which, which translates face-to-face, -face, really. And um, when you have, have a face-to-face -face uh, conversation, uh, there is a sense um, that you're being heard uh, right there directly in front of you. Uh, and that, that's, that's uh, uh, something that it's better for, uh, I feel is better for, for you to have, is that face-to-face -face contact with government officials and um, and social media is also there. It can get uh, around. However, to be being able to voice the opinion, I, I believe, yeah, it's face to face. I, I agree with what they said. Um, so, currently in our Wellington City Youth Council, one of our uh, main priorities is being able to uh, make, create uh, submissions and just making mock submissions um, to get that practice in before we have to actually submit a real submission to uh, the council. So that's been a um, really good opportunity for me, uh, just because not only do we get the opportunity to uh, voice our opinions in written format, we also uh, state in our submission that we would like to uh, head over to council to also give an uh, oral submission as well. So not only is it in written format, but also uh, being able to speak your voices and uh, opinions. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, in terms of the challenge that we just discussed and the ways to engage with decision making, what, are, is, what is your youth vision for Aotearoa, for the world, for the challenges that we face for climate change, for inequity, for inequalities? What is your vision for Aotearoa? What would your ideal New Zealand look like? Yeah, yeah, I think um, something that, that I think is really awesome is that my generation and that the, the youth generation, um, 
we've been proven to be a lot more accepting of different people, so of different sexualities and genders and races and cultures. Um, and I think that if we could further on this acceptance that we have and if we could put it into our police force and our government and our hospitals um, and just totally break down those stereotypes that we're living with, um, I think that would be really awesome. Yeah. Um, yes, I agree. I, I agree with that. Continuing on with that, um, I'd, I'd like to see that our country is connecting more with the indigenous cultures mm -hmm. and how um, indigenous people are quite close with the environment and that the environment is telling us things but we're, not, we, we, we're too focused on, on our no normal life that we're not, under <laughs> not listening to the environment. Um, with all the disasters that are happening, that, that's, that, that's an environment talking. That's Mother Earth telling us that we need to wake up. And that's what I believe, that we need to connect with our indigenous people um, to connect, to be able to connect with our land uh, and listen to it and um, for, yeah, for, for youth to be able to do that as well. So I have a dream <laughs> that one day, um, one day indigenous cultures uh, will all be, it'll be the normal, I guess, to foster and promote indigenous cultures right here in Aotearoa. I have a dream that one day rangatahi will be confident unto sharing their voices, sharing their opinions, because uh, as the saying goes, uh, we are, are the leaders for tomorrow. So I think it's a really important thing that uh, we learn uh, to voice our thoughts and opinions right now uh, for the betterment for our Mangauri Whakaheke for our up and coming generations. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, in terms of being involved, for our young people to be involved in these, in facing these challenges, and this is very relevant for everyone here, how, what's the best way to engage with young people? How do you know when you're meaningfully involved, when you're valued, when you're legitimised in any decision making process? <laughs> Big questions. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know like I went to an event um, just a couple of weeks ago um, and I know that the youth minister for New Zealand was there um, and it was amazing um, and he came up and talked to us as a group after that and instead of just coming and talking to us and just speaking to us, he actually asked us, he was like, well, well what do you guys want and what do you guys want to see? Um, and I think I was taken back because that was one of the first time when speaking to like a, a high up person and when speaking to a government person that they'd actually been interested in what we had to say and actually listened without just kind of blabbing stuff at us. Um, so yeah, I would, I don't, I don't know if that answers your question, but I think, um, no, nah, it is. It's important to actually ask questions, not just as a formality, but to actually want want to know the answer and to actually listen to the answer. Uh, I absolutely agree with that. And that goes back to, to, to what I was saying about kanohi ki te kanohi, face to face, and being eye to eye. Uh, ha having that sense that we're on the same level and that adults are listening to the youth. Uh, however, uh, youth, uh, adults can discipline the, the, the youth, however, and when there's that one level that we are all on, it's more understanding between both um, the adult and, and the youth. And, that's, and yeah, eye to eye, having that on the same platform and not having one up higher. Uh, that's what I, I, I believe, yes. Uh, yeah, so I'm um, also going off of that. Um, I'm lucky enough to be uh, one of 12 members to be in Minister Chris Hipkins' Youth Advisory Group. Um, and it's been a really amazing journey because um, as we share our thoughts, it, it feels like it's actually being listened to, like genuinely listened to by uh, the adults and by the people who come into our meetings. And it's not just something to tick a box, I guess, that, oh yeah, we've, we've spoken to Rangatai, we've spoken to you, if you tick the box. No, it's actually like they come, they really listen and uh, they really implement our thoughts uh, into the process of our education system. So, yeah, I guess that's what Rangatahi really look for is somebody who's actually listening, not just there to tick a box. Oh, and also, we don't like uh, just sitting around listening to people. We like games as well, so if you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just... And lollies. <laughs> um, awesome, we've got about five minutes, maybe two questions from the audience. Put it out there. First in, for serve, maybe. Oh, oh. Pass that mic to him. Right. Um, 
Thanks very much, guys. Kia ora. My name's Richard Osmiston from the New Zealand Institute of Resource-Based Economics. <coughs> the future that we are proposing has no money in it, no currency. Everything is free and everything is voluntary. And one of the comebacks that we get is that nobody will volunteer to do anything. In adults, we see plenty of volunteering in New Zealand. I mean, it blows us away how much volunteering is. But it's very difficult to get a representative sample from younger people. The, people, the young people, my kids, their friends, etc., that surround us, of course, they're all in my kind of bubble, so they're all super positive. In a, in a future society that supports us, that is not predatory, that is not exploiting, where we are all on the same page, as we're all human beings at the end of the day, do you think that yourselves and your friends and school, school colleagues and everything, would they volunteer for a society that supports them? Because there isn't going to be an external reward. It's just going to be, is it worth doing it? Would you volunteer for a society that supports you? Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, a good question. I guess just going off of what Charlotte said about um, uh, eliminating that stigma. Uh, so I think that part of the reason that young people aren't volunteering enough is because that it's seen to not be as cool as um, sitting at home playing the PS4, Fortnite for all of you who know Fortnite, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's, that's, part of the, um, that's part of the problem and it is an ongoing process that uh, we want to normalize, um, I guess just, oh yeah, just eliminate that stigma of it not being cool because it is, it is pretty cool to volunteer for, thing, yeah. <laughs> it is the coolest thing, yes. So yeah, I'm just gonna stop talking now. <laughs> Um, I see that, oh, what comes to mind with that question is that um, in Māori we have a proverb, nā ku te raurau, nā te raurau, kaurai tiwi, which is, uh, translates with my basket and your basket, um, the people will live. And, having, and youth now, there's a barrier there that they believe that they are entitled to everything and anything. However, um, that when you are when you are giving yourself to 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 an organisation to to something that will benefit the future of others, that's something that we will, will need to be delivered um, within us. That's what, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say from my experience volunteering as a young person, um, it's a weird kind of level to stand on because you're not an employee, you're not working for them, I guess. Um, but then you don't have the same respect as being a customer. Um, so you're on this weird level where it's like, and, and particularly being a young person, it's like you don't know where you stand and some people don't treat you very well. Um, so I think if you want to get more young people into volunteering, um, it needs to start with really respecting the volunteers that we have and treating them not less because they're not being paid, but actually I think you should kind of treat them better because they're taking it out of their time without that thing of just like wanting money, I guess. Okay. One question, and it'll have to be like three words as a question. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yell it out. So there's no. When you guys look into your future lives um, with climate change being the backdrop of it all, what do you see? Good question. Um, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't know a huge amount about climate change, but um, kind of from a young person's perspective, I think um, we're, we're put in a hard mindset because on one hand you've got um, like really cheap clothes and all the kind of fashionable clothes, I guess, um, are, you, are made in sweatshops and seem to be unsustainable. Um, so on one hand... Um, you're kind of like, yeah, well, I want to be, I want to be good for the environment, um, so then I won't use these clothes. But then on the other hand, it's like, but those are the nice clothes. Um, so I think, um, and that's not true, because there are so many amazing clothing brands that are so supportive of the environment. And I think it's a mindset shift that we need to have among young people. Um, and that's something that we all need to work on. Um, but yeah. Um, we'll wrap it up there. I think I'd like to leave the audience with, with a whakatoki quickly. Um, he waka e kanoa, a canoe which we're all in with no exception. And that means that young people are in that canoe too. We are part of the paddling, we're part of driving the direction. So we need to be there at the table. Our ideas and um, 
visions need to be valued as equally as anyone else's at that table. And that's the only way forward that we're going to be able to take on these challenges like climate change is that if we're there, we're respected and we're legitimised. I think we've all echoed that quite well today and I hope that you've been able to take that on board as well. So yeah, kia ora, thank you. <laughs>